Welcome. The topic of today's lecture is uh, magnetic ceramics. Uh, although our focus is on ceramic materials, but to understand the properties of these ceramic, this group of ceramics, we need to understand the basics, some of the basic concepts of magnetism and uh, compare the properties of the ceramics with the other group of materials like uh, metals and alloys. So, to start with, as I mentioned, our topic is uh, magnetic ceramics and uh, we will first consider a few general concepts in magnetism. These are basic physics from the undergraduate physics, one can go through this and uh, some of the relationships. There is a strong relations, correlation between magnetism and dielectric properties, which we will take it up in a minute. So, magnetic induction is basically dependent on the magnetic field we apply, particularly when the environment is vacuum we can write an equation B 0 equal to mu 0 multiplied by H, H is the magnetic field and B 0 is the result of that. So, it is a magnetic flux density or sometimes it is call also called magnetic induction. So, B 0 is mu 0 H where H is the magnetic field and mu 0 is the magnetic permeability. We have seen earlier a similar term epsilon 0 in case of dielectric properties or dielectric behavior or dielectric uh, polarization. Here uh, very similar term is there mu 0 is the magnetic permeability in vacuum, uh, the subscript 0 denotes vacuum here again and it is a constant uh, with a value of 4 pi into 10 to the power 27, uh, to 10, 10 to the power 7 web per ampere meter. Now, there are various uh, different units uh, used not only for this particular parameter, but uh, in the context of uh, the magnetic behavior or magnetic um, other parameters in magnetism. Uh, the units are uh, volt second per meter that is the same permeability is also written as wave per meter square and uh, which is also Tesla which is nothing but 10 to the power 4 Gauss. So, the measure of magnetic field in fact magnetic field uh, is uh, there are various different units used in the literature. Instead of vacuum if we have a material magnetic material which responds to the magnetic field in some form or the other. Then we can write the magnetic induction B uh, mu 0 H plus J which is J is the magnetic polarization and J also has a relationship with M, M is a magnetization and uh, by that we can write mu 0 H uh, plus M. And from this relationship, one can get J, the magnetic polarization equal to uh, mu 0 chi m. We introduce another parameter which is very similar to the dielectric behavior chi m, the susceptibility, magnetic susceptibility, and it is written as uh, chi m equal to m by h. Okay. So, the magnetic polarization here also we are bringing in a term which is called magnetic polarization J is mu 0 multiplied by uh, chi m uh, multiplied by h. m as I mentioned just now is magnetization and in other words magnetic moment uh, per unit volume. So, this is also a kind of relationship between uh, magnetic moment and the magnetization.
as you have see, told you that uh, the flux density B with a material uh, equal to B equal to mu 0 1 plus chi n h that is a important relationship and from which we derive another permeability term that is the relative permeability mu r to 1 plus chi m. This 1 plus chi m is the mu r. So, this is also magnetic susceptibility as been mentioned and finally, the magnetic induction is mu 0 mu r uh, h. So, it is a proportional the magnetic induction is proportional to the uh, magnetic field we apply. Okay. Uh, here of course, one should also notice that uh, it is a very uh, closely related to the dialectic phenomena uh, we have studied earlier. So, that gives us a comparison analogy between magnetic and dialectic properties or dialectic parameters. Uh, this is magnetic field strength H okay, and that is uh, ampere per meter whereas this is electric field strength. So, that is the external field magnetic field we apply. Of course, there is a correlation between the magnetic field and the electrical current which normally the magnetic field is generated by a solenoid or by a permanent magnet from outside. So, magnetic flux density the induction we are basically talking about how this uh, material responds to the external field H. Okay. Uh, here also the dielectric displacement is D. Uh, they have a uh, analogy uh, between each other. Magnetic polarization J uh, and here is a dielectric polarization P and the units are uh, ampere second per meter square where is volt seconds per meter square. So, magnetization m this particular term does not have a real analogy with the dialectic phenomena otherwise all the terms have some uh, uh, parallel uh, phenomena in both the uh, types of uh, interactions. B equal to mu 0 h plus j that is mu 0 h plus m that I have written earlier and here also the similar expression is uh, dielectric displacement uh, is equal to epsilon naught E plus P polarization. Here j is the polarization here P is the polarization and then uh, once again one can write this expression we have also seen mu 0 mu r h here also dielectric displacement equal to epsilon 0 epsilon r e. The polarization can be also expressed in the form of susceptibility that is uh, mu 0 chi m h here and here is dielectric susceptibility this is magnetic susceptibility and that is dielectric susceptibility and the relationships are very similar. Magnetization again does not have a particular uh, analogy with in the dialectic phenomena chi m h this is not there so far as the dialectic phenomena is concerned. Uh, this is mu r equal to 1 plus chi m and epsilon r is 1 plus chi e. So, the two phenomena magnetic phenomena and dialectic phenomena are very similar in nature although there are certain differences and uh, it will be clear when you discuss further. So, those are some of the phenomenological description of the magnetic behavior of material and uh, here is uh, we like to understand where from this magnetic behavior comes from. And uh, as we have seen there are different mechanisms of polarization in dielectric uh, material here also the, there is origin of magnetism in uh, any material. Okay. Uh, of course, dielectric phenomena comes only when we apply an electric field from outside, but in magnetism 
the magnetic phenomena or magnetic behavior arises from within the material okay <coughs> because magnetism basically a result of some current flow electrical current flow or in the form of a solenoid and so on. So, whenever there is a electric current flow uh, uh, or movement of charge in a continuous manner you will have some magnetic field generated and that is the reason in any material you have magnetic field within the within the system itself primarily because uh, there is charge species like electrons which are moving and which is uh, uh, going in a circular path around the nucleus and that is equivalent to a flow of current. So, there is major difference there so far as the dialectic phenomena and magnetic phenomena is concerned. Uh, dialectic phenomena only when there is external field applied to it and the charged particles or the charged species respond to the external applied field uh, in a particular manner and that give rise to dialectic phenomena or dialectic constant, dialectic permittivity and so on or dialectic polarization. Uh, similar thing happens here when we apply a external dialectic external magnetic field in a magnetic material, but in addition or any material in fact, but in addition uh, all materials have, because they have some electrons within them and the electrons the flow of electrons are basically uh, equivalent to a flow of current. So, there is some magnetism or uh, there is a magnetic field generated within and that is uh, what we would like to understand in addition to external magnetic field. So, they respond to the external magnetic field and but they have some origin of magnetism from the inside. So, in a magnetic phenomena what happens you have a current flowing because these are the uh, flow of current uh, electrons are flowing and therefore, you generate a magnetic field magnetic lines of force and this is a continuous magnetic lines of force. Okay. The, the current is flowing in this horizontal path, okay. the electron is moving in this path and so there is a magnetic field uh, perpendicular to that and the magnetic lines of force uh, are depending on uh, the intensity and the surroundings either they will be circular or it may pass through the center of the um, coil. So, the flow of electrons or the circular orbit actually acts like a uh, current flowing through a uh, flowing through an wire conducting wire. Okay. So, you have a magnetic dipole generated in even in the absence of an electric field from a magnetic field from outside. So, you have a macroscopic view magnetic dipoles are already, already there in the material. Of course, we will find out some of them are effective and all of them are not really effective in, in that sense. Uh, this is a macroscopic scale, but in a microscopic scale you have some magnetic lines of force already all the time present. Uh, whereas, in this case only some dipoles are prepared uh, dipoles are generated only when there is an applied electric field except in some material where there is spontaneous polarization, but spontaneous polarization here a uh, spontaneous magnetization is always present in a magnetic field uh, in a magnetic material or almost all the material. Okay. So, that is uh, the origin of the magnetism from the material itself. The relationship here magnetic dipole moment is mu m equal to i current flowing through that and a is the area, area of the circular path. Okay. And uh, magnetic polarization j equal to n into mu m, mu m is the magnetic uh, dipole moment, dipole moment multiplied by the number of dipoles present. The same thing here also you have dipole moment this is q multiplied by d that means q is the charge and the distance of separation is d and the dipole polarization is uh, p capital P equal to 
uh, small n into mu p is the dipole moment multiplied by the number of dipoles present per unit volume. So, these are the some kind of a correlation or some kind of a analogy between magnetic phenomena and dielectric phenomena. As I have mentioned that since current is flowing in <coughs> around the nucleus in a circular path uh, or the electrons are moving in a circular path. So, it is equivalent to a uh, flow of current. So, if you have a orbit, so that gives rise to some magnetic field or magnetic dipole moment. Magnetic, uh, this is if this is the current flowing in this direction, this will be the perpendicular to that, that will be the magnetic lines of force. And uh, orbital dipole moment, a uh, orbital magnetic moment arises from the orbiting of the electrons around the nucleus. So, this is one kind of uh, motion of the electrons which gives rise to the magnetic uh, dipole moment, and uh, that can be expressed as L the orbital angular momentum equal to L the angular mom, uh, momentum quantum number L multiplied by h bar uh, h is the Planck's constant or in other words mu L the dipole moment is equivalent to I into A, I is the current flowing and A is the area that also has been mentioned. So, mu L is the orbital dipole mo magnetic dipole moment magnetic moment I is the atomic circular current which is flowing because of the flow of the, elect uh, the movement of the electrons and A is the area of the orbit. So, this is one kind of origin of the magnetic moment in any material in fact, wherever the nucleus uh, electron is moving uh, surrounding the nucleus you have a current flowing equivalent which is equivalent to a current and that gives rise to a dipole moment or magnetic moment. So, this is one kind of origin of magnetism in uh, any material. This can be further uh, calculated or expressed in different quantities in terms of other quantities. So, the orbital angular momentum uh, is equal to L h bar which has been mentioned earlier which is again equivalent to m e omega r square omega is the velocity angular velocity with which the electron is moving. Okay. So, omega is the angular velocity with which the electron is moving and that is the origin of the orbital angular momentum. Um, uh, magnetic uh, moment. So, m e is the mass of the electron r is the radius radius of the uh, circle uh, in which the electron is moving. Uh, from this one can also write omega equal to L h bar m e r square and uh, I is the current atomic circular current within an atom and Q is the charge T is the time uh, we have a velocity here angular velocity. So, E multiplied by V and then 2 pi r okay, that is the uh, circular path. So, E omega 2 pi E, of e is the electronic charge okay, E is the electronic charge. So, magnetic moment mu L which we have defined earlier mu L that is the magnetic moment for one particular electron which is moving orbiting uh, around the nucleus. Then E omega 2 pi into pi r square that is the area that is pi r square is the area. So, L uh, E h prime 2 m e m e is the mass of the electron and that term comes up in the magnetic calculation magnetic moment calculation or magnetic 
property calculation most of the times and that particular term E h bar 2 m e is known as the Bohr magneton that is an unit of magnetic moment. So, is called mu b equal to Bohr magneton. So, the orbital magnetic moment ultimately comes to L multiplied by mu b the Bohr magneton. So, <coughs> depending on the uh, depending on the angular uh, quantum number magnetic quantum number L you have the total magnetic moment multiplied by that number and mu b is this uh, parameter which is fixed which is constant. So, uh, one can see the orbital angular momentum is actually some integer multiple of mu b this particular term. So, depending on the number of uh, depending on the value of L the total orbital angular momentum will vary. To continue further uh, this we have seen this is the expression of mu b and that is as I mentioned is a constant number and that value of that number is 9.274 in 10 to the minus 24 ampere meter square. So, that is a constant which will come across uh, most of the time when you are trying to calculate or uh, understand the magnetic behavior uh, of different materials. Mu b is the elementary quantity of magnetic moments. Uh, orbital magnetic moment arises, uh, arises in multiples of mu b that I have just mentioned. More accurate expression of orbital magnetic moment is however, uh, it is just not L actually it is more precisely uh, without going to the details of that more precisely one can write orbital magnetic moment is actually mu b uh, root over L into L plus 1. So, it is just not L into mu b, but it is actually a root over L into L plus 1 that is the accurate more accurate expression of the uh, magnetic moment orbital magnetic moment. But mu b is certainly an important parameter whenever you are trying to calculate uh, any magnetic moment of any origin. There is one more uh, origin of magnetic moment inside an electron inside an atom. So, atoms have uh, two different origins of magnetic moment within from within one is uh, we have discussed already the orbital magnetic moment the other one is the spin magnetic moment. So, the spin magnetic moment s uh, equal to in fact s equal to plus half and minus half that is the spin of any electron. So, in addition to the orbit orbital motion it has a spin motion uh, on its own axis and uh, as it is known that it has two uh, possible uh, spin quantum numbers one is half plus half and is minus half and that also that spinning on its own uh, axis also gives rise to a magnetic moment and that is called the spin magnetic moment. Uh, mu s once again just mu orbital uh, mu s uh, mu orbital or mu l which you have used earlier mu s is the spin magnetic moment and uh, uh, which is again the magnetic moment of the electronic spin that is arising from the spin of the electron and that can be expressed as mu s equal to 2 into mu b once again the same number uh, is coming up some unit is coming up of mu b Bohr magneton and uh, multiplied by s ok s is the spin and then s is plus half or minus half. So, uh, it gives rise to the spin magnetic moment is equal to uh, mu b plus minus mu b. So, it is either mu b plus or mu b or minus mu b 
So, the multiplier is only one. Okay. So, for each electron or uh, electronic spin you have uh, one uh, Bohr magneton equivalent to one Bohr magneton of magnetic moment and uh, either one or plus uh, minus or plus one or minus one. Once again just like the mu orbital or mu L we have used earlier, uh, it is not exactly the integer or just multiplied by L, it is L root over L uh, into L plus 1 uh, that is the multiplying multiplier uh, multiplying integer a multiplying number. Uh, here also in case of spin magnetic moment it is just not s into 2 mu b, but instead of it is the more accurate expression is uh, root over s into s plus 1. So, these are uh, the two expressions of the two types of magnetism which originates from the movement of the electrons. Uh, within an atom. So, all atoms have this kind of a magnetic moment uh, present in them, but depending on the type of the atom and its their combination, their crystal structure, they actually uh, come up uh, the, uh, the outs from the outside the in a macroscopic scale uh, the magnetic moments will be quite different and that we will like to C uh, next. The total magnetic moment of a polyelectronic atom which you have discussed so far in terms of the orbital magnetic moment or the spin magnetic moment, uh, it basically we talked about only one electron. Okay. Uh, however, if uh, obviously the num atoms have more number of electrons and uh, they will combine each other and they will interact and the overall uh, magnetic moment of the atom uh, from the electron we are uh, upgrading it to atom integrating it to the atom. So, this is an expression this is an expression for the total ion okay, total ion having one electron and mu s mu of orbital equal to g multiplied by e by 2 m e e is the electronic charge again m e 2 m e or m e is the mass and g uh, is known as the land splitting factor once again a constant. However, it is an integer it is a value varying between 1 and 2 depending on the relative contributions of the spin I am sorry there are mistake over there. Right. Uh, mm, there are contributions of spin and the orbital magnetic moments. That means, in each electron, uh, each in uh, each atom, we have two different contributions. One is the orbital contribution and the spin contribution. So the overall contribution is some kind of an additive term, and that additive term is not a simple addi addition, but uh, it's a little uh, complex. And this is how it is added up. Okay. So there is a g factor, lambda splitting factor, and this pi total. This is pi total. Uh, is the total angular momentum it is called total angular momentum. Okay. So, somehow this is the kind of an expression uh, of the two terms the orbital magnetic moment and the spin magnetic moment. Now, particularly we will see later on our one of our major interest is in the particular group of elements that is 3 d elements the transition metal elements and these 3 d elements with unfilled 3 d cell the orbital contribution is fully quenched which means when we are talking about this group of uh, ions or atoms with unfilled uh, 3 d cell 
then the orbital magnetic moment is almost negligible and we need not consider compared to the spin magnetic moment that is negligible and that is what we call the orbital contribution is fully quenched and therefore, the ions contribution or the atoms contribution is 2 b s root over 2 b uh, that means, one of the terms is dominating uh, we have seen it earlier this one this is the spin magnetic moment contribution and this is the orbital magnetic mo moment contribution uh, this is almost negligible compared to that. So, uh, we have the magnetic moment the overall magnetic moment of the ion con consisting of several electrons is 2 b uh, what is the spin quantum number and uh, that is uh, root over of s into s plus 1 uh, where s is a summation of the all the electrons. Okay. So, s summation of the spin moment of all the electrons available. So, that gives you the total spin quantum number a uh, spin magnetic moment and that is the predominating term the orbital magnetic moment is negligible uh, in group of these group of materials. With this uh, background there, so we have learned there is a, in any atom uh, there is a origin of magnetism or magnetic moment there are two types of uh, two different origins one is from the movement of the electrons the orbital uh, movement of the electrons around the nucleus and other is the movement of the electrons around its own axis. So, one is called the orbital magnetic moment the other is called the spin magnetic moment. Well, with this uh, background let us keep that aside and let us go to the phenomenological description of different kind of materials based on uh, what we have discussed initially uh, that is the permeability and the susceptibility terms two different terms and uh, that is the kind of response response of the different uh, materials or uh, the atoms or uh, the structure uh, crystals to the external magnetic field. So, both mu r mu r and chi m uh, mu r is the permeability and the chi m is the susceptibility these two are the phenomenological description or the phenomenological parameter of the materials uh, response to the external magnetic field and these based on that how they respond to the external magnetic field based on that uh, there are different kinds of material there are ty different types or classified materials can be classified under different groups. Uh, these are the four or three in fact three different groups, uh, but they have subgroups we will find find them we will discuss them in details. So, that the first group is diamagnetic material it is a weak effect that means, their effect to the external magnetic field is fairly low they do not respond to strongly and uh, the mathematically one can say that the mu r the relative permeability uh, is less than 1 is negative a uh, less than 1 and this is negative ok chi m is negative and this is less than 1. If this this group of material is called diamagnetic material and they have a weak effect they do not respond to the external magnetic field uh, so strongly. The second group is called the paramagnetic and antiferromagnetic materials ok antiferromagnetic paramagnetic as well as antiferromagnetic they respond more or less in similar manner and once again it is a weak effect and here mu r is no, no longer negative uh, no, no, not less than 1, but is positive uh, sorry is more than 1. So, mu r is more than 1 that means, mu r is basically um, uh, mu by mu 0. So, it is more than 1 and chi m is greater than 0 that is, is positive here it is negative this is positive and this is less than 1 is more than 1. There is third group ferro and ferry magnetism and here it is very a strong effect that means, it strongly affect 
the, uh, strongly responds to the external magnetic field. And uh, that is because it is uh, relative permeability is much much greater than 1 and chi m is also greater than 0, much greater than 0. So, by that uh, they are characterized. So, this is this group of materials uh, magnetic materials are of uh, tremendous importance from the application point of view, we will look into that later. Now, ideally there may be one group because here we have see it is less than 1, less than 0, these are all more than 1, more than 0 and this is much more than this value. So, ideally there should be a situation where it is somewhere in between that means, mu r is exactly 1 and chi m is exactly 0. Ideally that should be there, but in reality it does really does not exist either it is slightly below or slightly above uh, the 0 value 1 and 0 values. So, ideally it should can have, but really in reality does not exist. So, this is not a group of materials of our interest obviously because such materials do not exist. We have only these three groups and these I am sorry once again there is one sorry uh, I should correct that. there is two problem of serial numbers. Right. Sorry, uh, the seat there are some problem of serial numbers. So, we have uh, four groups actually, fourth does not exist, other three really exist, and out of these three groups, two of them have two subgroups, as, I men as it is mentioned here paramagnetic and antiferromagnetic. They are uh, so far as these parameters are concerned, is same but their behaviors are different, their uh, other many of the other properties are quite different, we will look into that later. Uh, similarly, you have two groups here, uh, so far as these properties are concerned, uh, they are identical, but they again have a different other properties, we will look into that later. I have to correct it once more. Right. Okay. Now, we look at uh, some of the other aspects of uh, these groups. Uh, first of all, the diamagnetic or diamagnetism, uh, the basic requirement atoms with completely filled orbitals. Okay. So, one of the requirement the elements which have uh, completely filled orbitals like inert gases, they do have this kind of behavior, diamagnetic behavior that means their mu r is less and uh, chi m is also less than sorry mu r is less than 1 and chi m is less than 0. Uh, no magnetic moment without applied electric field, just because they have a field cells in principle they should have a magnetic moment, but they do not generate any magnetic moment. So, the compensation of spin moments. So, each one of them has uh, a 
negative and positive component uh, obviously they cancel each other. Uh, the orientation magnetic dipole, the orientation this is the kind of orientation in the absence of a magnetic external and magnetic field. So, since they are all field cells there is no unfilled cells. So, there is no internal magnetization or magnetic moment and in absence whatever small magnetic moment are there uh, from the uh, dipolar magnets uh, they are aligned anti parallelly aligned with each other. However, when you apply magnetic field if there is a magnetic field this is your material you have the magnetic lines of force. Uh, because of this value and because this chi m is uh, negative. So, the magnetic lines of force are repelled by the diamagnetic material. So, diamagnetic material really do not uh, like the magnetic lines of force they on the other hand repel them and uh, the inert gases ionic crystals, semiconductors, metals like this which is mostly the uh, field orbitals will have this kind of a property. Okay. So, this most important thing is the uh, rarefaction of the magnetic lines of force through the diamagnetic material. Comparing to that a paramagnetism is like this and this is the uh, kind of orientation of the dipoles or the um, in absence of the uh, external magnetic field this is the dipole moments whatever is there uh, they are kind of random orientation. Uh, the atoms with partially filled orbitals ok here it is uh, atoms with partially filled earlier it was completely filled here it is partially filled feeble magnetic moment in absence of applied field. So, even in the absence of the magnetic field they have a very feeble magnetic moment and the disorder arrangement of the magnetic dipoles. So, mostly the magnetic dipoles uh, which is are there for each atoms they are in the disorder form. And uh, in absence in, in the presence of a magnetic field when we apply a magnetic field they like to con get concentrated around within the material. So, compared to the diamond diamagnetic material where it was repelling the magnetic lines of force were repelled here it is attracted. So, there is a little bit of concentration uh, around or within the magnetic uh, ma paramagnetic material. The examples of such materials is alkali, alkaline earth metals, oxygen, uh, aluminum, tin and platinum etcetera. So, these are some of the materials which act as a paramagnetic, there are very weak magnetic, magnetic materials. Next is ferro, ferromagnetic material. Uh, here, of course, there is strong magnetic effect, atoms with partially filled orbitals, primarily the d cells, d cell orbital, and then large magnetic moment spontaneous magnetization presence of magnetic domains ok. It is identical or analogous to ferroelectric material in the in presence of uh, the electric field. So, they have a large magnetic moment uh, spontaneous magnetization. So, even in the absence of a um, magnetic field they are magnetized and the presence of magnetic domains that also give rise to magnetic domains just like ferroelectric domains we have seen earlier. So, within this domain the magnetic moments are aligned in a particular direction. However, uh, the neighboring domains may have a different orientation. Most important thing in the, abs in the presence of a ma magnetic field uh, they get strongly coupled with the ferromagnetic material. So, the lines of force gets concentrated and passes through the magnetic material. So, their coupling is quite strong in other cases the coupling is quite weak. 
materials like iron, cobalt, nickel, these are three transition metal elements with a strong ferroelectric effect, ferroelectric property and of course, their alloys also. Okay. So, these are ferromagnetic materials and uh, iron is one of the major or the most important uh, element or member of this group and in addition to cobalt and nickel also have the same similar properties. So, this is where the strong magnetic coupling takes place with the external magnetic field and that is why mu r is much much greater than 1 and chi m is also more than 0, it is actually positive. This is uh, anti ferromagnetism, in fact earlier we had 3 groups, now we have 5 groups including the 2 subgroups. So, anti ferromagnetism was coupled with uh, or combined with paramagnetism which is very similar behavior so far as the uh, external magnetic field is concerned. However, their origins are little different, uh, here once again the atoms with partially filled orbitals, the magnetic moment full compensation of the magnetization by anti parallel alignment. Okay. We will look into this what exactly it means, but basically uh, it is given here to some extent that each magnetic moment has an anti parallel pair. Okay. So, uh, each of them are cancelling each other. So, exactly the same magnet uh, uh, quantitative value and but the direction is different, direction is just anti parallel. So, there are pairs of magnetic moments having the exact same value, but in opposite direction. So, individually they have magnetic moments, but for some reason or other they have an anti parallel ordering and because of the anti parallel ordering the overall magnetic moment is 0, almost very close to 0 and that is why chi m is very close to 0. So, it is a weak magnetization very similar to parallel paramagnetic materials. So, that was that is the reason they were combined together, okay. uh, but individually each atom uh, has a strong uh, magnetic moment uh, resultant magnetic moment, uh, but when it is combined in the crystal structure in a particular structure uh, they uh, align get them aligned in opposite directions. So, the examples are basically not metals or elements in this case primarily is the oxides like uh, MO kind of oxides MNO, FeO, NiO, CO all of them you will find you will remember all of them have a rock salt structure sodium chloride structure. So, they have identical structures and uh, because of their Inter, uh, interaction between them, the magnetic moments are aligned particular in an anti parallel manner, and that is the reason uh, this group of materials is called anti ferromagnetism. So, compared to ferromagnetism, where there is a parallel alignment, here is an anti parallel alignment, and, uh, and therefore, its name is, <coughs> is given as anti parallel uh, anti ferromagnetism. The last group in this series is actually called ferry magnetism. This is very close uh, to ferromagnetism, but the relation or uh, the origin of this magnetic behavior is slightly different, and that is why although they are strong magnetic material like ferromagnetic material, strong magnetization uh, mu r is much much greater than 1 and chi m is also. Uh, more than 0. So, very similar to that of ferromagnetic material, but uh, they are not called ferromagnetic material, they is called ferry magnetic material. So, this distinction must be remember that although their behavior is more or less same uh, in many ways, but uh, the origin uh, of the magnetism or the response to the external magnetic field uh, is uh, uh, slightly different, sorry response to the magnetic field is different, but the origin uh, uh, response to the magnetic field is same, but the origins are different and that is why uh, they have not been termed in, uh, with the same name 
uh, there one is ferromagnetism and another is ferry magnetism. Uh, you will see one thing here you can see the coupling with the external magnetic field with ferromagnetism and ferry magnetism is almost identical. Okay. So, the um, they can be used more or less in the same purpose uh, because they have the same uh, uh, kind of properties. Okay. Now, coming back to the paramagnetism and diamagnetism which are weak magnet, magnetic materials, weak magnetic materials and therefore, they have some kind of linear magnetism or linear just like linear dielectrics here also one can say linear magnetic materials uh, because the polarization uh, versus the uh, external magnetic field H J versus H carb is linear. However, there is uh, one difference between the two two magnetic materials one the red one is the paramagnetic material it has a positive slope and the uh, black one is diamagnetic it is a negative slope. Okay. So, that is one of the major distinctions in addition to what we have discussed earlier. So, this is one way to distinguish between paramagnetic material and diamagnetic material uh, both of them are weak magnetic materials their response to the external magnetic field is fairly weak. Uh, however, one responds completely differently than the other paramagnetic material has a positive slope. So, far as the polarization is concerned magnetic polarization is concerned whether on the other hand diamagnetic has a negative slope, but both of them have a linear slope. These are some of the examples and specific values of susceptibility uh, for a group of diamagnetic as well as paramagnetic materials. Uh, this is you can see here most of them values are in the range of 10 to the power minus 5, but all are negative and uh, uh, there are slight variations, but more or less in the same range. Aluminum oxide, copper, gold, silver, silicon, zinc, metallic zinc, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride uh, and aluminum oxide are two compounds, they have also the similar uh, range of susceptibilities and they are diamagnetic materials. Uh, here on the other side aluminum uh, sorry the paramagnetic materials are aluminum another another set of uh, elements and also some compounds like aluminum, chromium, molybdenum, sodium, titanium, zirconium and as you can see one thing is you can see the susceptibility in both the cases in the order of 10 to the minus 5 whereas one is positive and there is just negative otherwise they have certain amount of similarity and even manganese sulphide, manganese sulphide has 3.7 in 10 to the minus 5. So, uh, this is just to give you an idea uh, what is the range of susceptibility uh, of different groups of materials like but particularly the weak magnetic materials like diamagnetic and paramagnetic materials. Temperature dependence of particularly the paramagnetic materials paramagnetic susceptibility it is a uh, uh, it is a temp as temperature increases uh, the chi m or the susceptibility decreases which is uh, quite understandable because basically in a crystal uh, or in a solid there are atoms and each atom has some magnetic moments aligned in a particular direction and uh, these atoms because of the temperature range temperature rise there is a uh, more of randomness because of the thermal vibration and that decreases the susceptibility. So, whatever small susceptibility it has uh, still it further decreases and uh, it is a kind of uh, parabolic relationship. 
or inverse relationships, not parabolic, inverse, inverse relationship. So, one can plot uh, and uh, express this chi m as a constant, c is a constant and t is the um, temperature in Kelvin. Compared to that, compared to that whatever we have seen earlier in a table, uh, the susceptibility is of the order of 10 to the minus 5 either positive or negative. Compared to that if we go to some of the strong magnetic materials like uh, ferromagnetic materials, the strong magnetic materials are also there like ferrimagnetic, we will look into that later. Uh, ferromagnetic materials the susceptibilities or these are not susceptibilities I am sorry this is a permeability mu is uh, as it mentioned is much much greater than 1 and uh, these are of this order. Magnetic iron is 200, nickel is 100, uh, permalloy which is a permanent magnet is an alloy of nickel and iron about 8000 and uh, another alloy again a permanent magnet uh, 75 is to 75 nickel and 18 percent iron and in addition to about chromium and copper some amount of. Now, these are different phases, these are not pure elements and different uh, crystallographic phases will have a different property and one can by that process one can increase the magnetic, the magnetic permeability to the order of about 20,000. So, that is very important. So, they can respond to the external magnet field very, very strongly and they can be uh, they are basically ferromagnetic materials and they can be converted into a permanent magnet. Okay. So, where the magnetic lines of force will remain there and it will not destroy. So, in other cases because of the weak magnetic um, response uh, only when the magnetic field is applied we get a induction or polarization whereas, here the polarization will be permanent and one can get a magnetic field generated out of it. So, the time is uh, almost up. So, we will discuss this further uh, in the next lecture. Thank you, thank you for your attention.